So if I'm going to do any real projects in this garage, I'm going to need a little bit more power than what they gave me. This project is about as straightforward as it comes. It's going to be one outlet, one circuit, and the run is all of maybe two feet below the box. It should go pretty smoothly. That'll allow me to put my larger tools, like the table saw and the joiner, on a separate circuit from the dust collector, both of which use a lot of power and can't be on the same circuit. So the interesting thing about this house is it has an electrical generator. Several of the circuits in this panel was moved to the sub-panel via this 100 amp breaker. If we lose power from the mains, the electrical generator kicks in and will power all of the breakers in this box. It occurs to me that it might actually be handy to have a separate outlet in the garage that's run from the electrical generator in the event of emergency. It could power some accessories or who knows what. Wow, is that a lot of stuff in there. You know, maybe I won't really mess with it. Local electric codes do vary from region to region, and for good reason, so it's always a good idea to check them when you're doing this kind of work. Like how I did. Safety, Safety first. first. I'll be shutting off the power in the box by turning off this breaker, but when we're working in the circuit panel, we can't shut the power off to the whole box unless we pull the meter. By throwing off the main switch, what we're going to do is turn off the two main rails. The main power coming from the meter comes in these two wires. Those bolts over there, they will remain live. Don't touch them. So we'll be inserting our wires here at the bottom of the box, where these metallic pop-outs are. I'm going to be using a half-inch one, so we're going to look for one of the smaller ones. If you'd use anything larger than that, they have these here with multiple tiered rings. These can be a little bit tricky. Oftentimes what happens is you try to pop out a smaller size and it takes an outer ring with it. There isn't really a good fix for that other than to get a larger insert and then get an adapter get an that takes you down to the size you were originally working with. Oh, there's a 2x4 under here. I'm going to have to drill that out. It's, it's not a big problem, but it will complicate things. Six and a half by uh, one and five eighths. First, I'll make the hole for the conduit. So my original plan was to use a smaller bit, which was the conduit size, to get through the drywall, and then slip this bit behind it, the larger bit, to go through the 2x4. That would allow me to attach the fitting securely to the box. The drywall here hugs the 2x4. I guess I should have expected that, but I won't be able to do what I originally thought. I'm going to have to use the larger drill bit and just fill in the hole at the bottom. Yeah, so this battery's dead. It's a good idea to make sure your batteries are fully charged before you start a project. Well, I missed the hole. So, unfortunately, I missed the hole. I was hoping to get close to over here, and apparently my center point is back here, where the tip of the blade emerged and actually poked through the wire. Don't do that. It's a good thing I had the power off. It... Oh, I forgot to turn the power off. So it would have been a little bit smarter had I drilled a smaller hole through the center here in the downward direction. There was certainly room enough in the box to get a drill in there. The hole at the bottom would have been a good guideline for drilling upward to make sure I was centered. I need to just widen the hole just a little bit more to be able to fit that adapter in there. So with the PVC fitting in, it's time to put on the nut. And while we're here, I may as well tape up the hole. So standard height for an outlet is maybe 16 to 18 inches, and here it'll be uh, around there. So I'll be using these plastic wall anchors to anchor the box to the cement. And I have the right size uh, cement bit over here. 
and a hammer drill makes easy work of it. To turn on the hammer action of the hammer drill, on this one, there's a lever. So because the hole into the box is about an inch and a half away from the back wall, I'm going to have to bend the conduit tubing just a bit. I know that they sell curved PVC conduit, but I've never had much success getting it to follow the exact curves that I need. The plan here is to use a heat gun to soften the PVC pipe and bending it into shape. When it's cool, it'll hold its shape. This thing gets to be 900 degrees, so for safety, I'll be working on a metal surface. So I'll be marking this about an inch and a half to represent the distance between the wall and the box. Mm. Let's try that again. The edge of the paper represents the box. And the center of the pipe just has to follow each one of these. And now I'll just have to hold it here until it cools. Oh, shit! Ah, shit! Quick! Ah. Ah. I guess if you're working with the heat gun, you should make sure there's nothing flammable around. Right? To throw something that's on fire in a trash can, you should probably make sure the trash can isn't filled with sawdust. Excuse me.